What's up, fam? My name is Manny, and I hope this is worth your time. I grew up in New York City. I'm from a Dominican family. And if you know anything about my culture, food is commonplace. It is powerful. And y'all, Dominican food is A1. <laughs> my mom is incredible in the kitchen. And so growing up, I started working really young. I played baseball. I was obviously a full-time student as well. So I had long days. And my mom will whip up incredible, delicious, and nutritious meals for me to consume before going on these long days. But I'll be honest with you, I didn't always want or even choose those meals. Some mornings I'll wake up and I'll just eat a slice of pizza from the local pizza shop before jumping on the train. Other mornings, don't judge me, I'll grab a Snickers bar and some other chocolate and go on my day. And one thing I've realized is that those days were different. The mornings where I'll eat my mom's delicious and nutritious meal, I'll have energy and sustenance that'll carry me throughout my day. And the days where I chose the incredibly satisfying pizza <laughs> or a Snickers bar that I was craving, I realized that my energy would deplete and I didn't have the same capacity or ability for that day. Now, I'm not here to talk about food, although if you know me, I'm a big food critic, I love food. I'm here to talk about something a little more worth your time. I'm here to talk about emptiness and fullness. You see, Jesus is no stranger to food or being or speaking on emptiness and fullness. As a matter of fact, in John chapter four, he's speaking to a woman at the well and his disciples were with him and he sends off his disciples to go get some food. May that be a slice of pizza or water burger, whatever you like. They went to go get it. And Jesus is absolutely speaking life over this woman and the disciples come back. And they come back and they realize that Jesus hasn't eaten. And we pick up the story in John chapter 4, verse 31. The disciples said, Rabbi, which means teacher, eat something. But Jesus replied, I have a kind of food you know nothing about. I want to stop here for a second. You see, there's a food available to you and I that perhaps you watching this, you know nothing about. I'm talking about a food that doesn't make you hungry, desperately hungry again. A food that once you consume it, it satisfies, not just right now, not just for today, but forever. What food is this? The disciples even asked each other, did someone bring him food while we were gone? They didn't understand. And then Jesus explained, my nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. What is that for you? What food have you been consuming? Has it been the Pop-Tarts of Netflix and trolling people on social media and looking at blogs and living vicariously through others? Maybe wasting your thumbs away on video games? Or has it been the food that satisfies, the food of calling people that you already know and love, but reminding them that you love them, and even more, that God loves them and sees them, and that they're not alone. Family, we're living in one of the loneliest, strangest, easy to be emptiest times in our lifetime. It's so easy to feel alone and misunderstood and feel crushed with everything happening in our world, but you and I are called not to sit in our emptiness, but to rise up and long for fullness again. I was talking to Adam about this earlier. Why is it that for some of us who've tasted and seen that God is good, like it says in his word, once we've been full of God on fire for him saying, man, everybody needs to know this love. Everybody needs to experience this purpose. Why is it that over time we run back to the pizza and to the Snickers bar of the world instead of coming back home to the delicious, nutritious meal that is knowing your worth in Christ. Why do we do it? Our flesh longs for the temporary, but our spirit longs for fullness. I wanna encourage you, everyone watching this, it's so easy to give in to the, the food that cannot stick to your bones. It's harder to choose the food that satisfies. But have you ever regretted eating a meal that gave you energy, that made you feel good, and that allowed you to keep going on that day? You haven't. And I promise you would not regret saying yes to Jesus for those of you who haven't, and for others, saying yes to Jesus again for those of you who've been missing. 
I want to encourage you in this moment. I'm about to pray. And as I pray, I don't want you to just watch me pray for you. I want you to partner with me in praying because Jesus said clearly that this fullness, the food that's available to us, we cannot find in the, in the, in the meaningless activities of the day, but it's literally actually thinking about others for a change. It's literally saying, God, show me my worth, remind me of who I am, and then move me into doing God's will for my life. Come on, let's pray. Father, I thank you for every single person watching this. Father, I pray that this time was worth their time. Father, I pray that you by your spirit are moving things, that you're changing things, whether that's a thought process, whether that's things in our heart that don't belong, addictions, struggles, lack of security, Lord. I pray that that foundation of our identities they're found in you, Lord, that when we look and think about what can fill me up in this dire time, that we can not look to you last as our last hope, but God, look to you first as our only hope. <laughs> the one that died on the cross for our sins, not just so that we can live life, but so we can live life in abundance. God, I pray that everyone watching this, I can't fill them up. Only they and you know how empty they are. I know how empty I am, but Father, I pray, will you give them boldness to ask you to fill them up again? <laughs> fill us up, Lord. We need you today. And I pray that we're never the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you.